Welcome to Summer Worship with Leaside and North Lee United, sister churches in the Leaside community of Toronto. To learn more about our ministries, visit our websites at northleyunited.ca and leasideunited.org. Welcome, and thank you for joining us in worship today. Today, North Lee United and Leaside United join together to offer you word, reflection, music, and prayer. We hope that our service will offer you comfort and inspiration. If you'd like more details of upcoming services for both of our congregations, please check our websites. And now join me for our call to worship. Each moment, we are given a choice. Each day, the choices we make have impact. Each life is an opportunity to honor the gift of life. Today, we are invited to make a difference. In this moment, we gather to choose love. Surely, God is in this place. Help me notice, help us notice together.
Let us pray. Intimate, compassionate, loving God, you know the wickedness that we must wrestle with. You know how lost and misguided we can be, yet you love us as your children. In Christ you offer forgiveness and the chance for us to reconcile with your unlimited grace. We pray today for our minds to be opened and our hearts to feel your tender compassion. May we be joined by your grace and sent forth with a renewed spirit of hope in the power of choosing your way. Amen. Our first psalm this morning is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This psalm begins the book of Psalms. It's the first one, and it begins by introducing the need to meditate on God's word, to reflect on these laws, the Torah, that are instructions about how to get along with one another. Professor Walter Brueggemann introduced Psalm 1 with these words. The psalm artistically presses the defining questions of life. To what is one devoted in life? How does one move forward in hope? What gives the most basic direction in life? With vivid poetic imagery, the poem invites readers to give attention to Yahweh's teaching and instruction in the Psalms, in all of scripture, and in God's continuing presence and activity. The most basic decision to follow God's direction makes it possible to be rooted, grounded, and fruitful. To be rooted, grounded, and fruitful. This psalm does two things. It discusses the question of what makes us happy, and it compares people, it compares us to trees. So let's take a moment with that question of what makes us happy. Psalm 1 talks about that question of how to be happy, where happiness comes from, and suggests that it comes from studying God's law, the Torah. The Torah teaches laws that are about how to get along with our neighbors, about being just. Patricia Tools reminds us that here the word righteousness isn't about purity categories. It's not about personal vices and virtues, but instead is about social categories, how we interact with one another. Another word that we could use is justice. It's about being just in our interactions with each other. So, The psalm suggests that our happiness comes from paying attention to how we interact with one another, how we treat one another. Kira Newman, for the Greater Good Science Center at the University of California, Berkeley, writes, research suggests that people who pursue external rewards like fame, power, wealth, and beauty in order to be popular are more anxious depressed and discontent compared to those who are focused on personal growth, relationships, and helping others. Our modern day science upholds what we've already been taught in scripture, 
that the route to happiness is not first thinking of ourselves, our own gain, our own beauty and achievement, but first thinking about others, how to best relate to others, how to give to others, how to be in relationships. The psalm does all of this in the context of imagining that we are like trees. Patricia Toole actually points out that scriptures talk about humans being like trees a lot more than we do in today's world. For instance, Judah's leadership as described in Isaiah will regenerate as a shoot from the stump of Jesse. That's just one of the many references in Isaiah that compare people to trees. And we hear it in the Psalms as well, not just Psalm 1 as we did, uh, as we listened to today, but in other Psalms such as Psalm 52, which includes these lines, I am like the green olive tree in the house of God. Again and again, scripture points to people as trees because of their strength and because of how quickly it points to that metaphor of being rooted, of being grounded in God's presence and in God's word. So in Psalm 1, we are like trees when we follow the Torah, when we follow the law, when we meditate day and night on scripture, which suggests that it's not easy, that it takes time and reflection to get along with one another but that this is the ground that is fertile, the ground that renews us, that nurtures us, that allows us to be fruitful, to care for others, to grow healthy, meaningful lives. We do this in worship. We do this in our own reflection as we continue to grow in our relationships with others, as we continue to treat others justly and to give generously. Let us join in prayer. Holy God, may we be like trees, strong oak, clustered pines, blossoming magnolias, strong scented cedars. May we be like trees that grow strong and fruitful in our attention to your word which is a reminder of your love and a call to share that love with all others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
so well my possessions. My boat carries no gold and no weapons. You will find there my nets and labor. Oh, Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me. And while smiling, have spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You need my hands full of other oceans ever longed for by souls who are waiting my loving friend as thus you call me oh Jesus with your eyes you have searched me and while smiling have spoken my Our second psalm comes from Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 18. A Psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I am still with you. Many spiritual teachers suggest that our awake state is really just a dream, a manifestation of our minds and a projection of the thoughts that dominate our waking life. Reality, then, is a state of consciousness that exists when our minds are stilled and our senses attuned to presence, an attentiveness free from the layers of interpretation, judgment, and evaluation that we normally apply when we engage with life. In this state of consciousness, everything is new and unencumbered by evaluation, 
comparison or analysis. We simply engage with it in momentary wonder and delight, each encounter flowing one from another as though there are no boundaries, no this or that, me or you. When we are resting in this state, we are connected to the presence of God, awed by the vastness of God's perspective, the limitless essence of beingness that we are all part of. We cannot live in that state of consciousness 24-7, but we can be reassured that when asleep or awake, God is still with us. In David's poetic psalm, God's presence is this intimate and personal, vast and wondrous. It is we that make God small, distant, impersonal, or frightening. I notice more and more that those who reject God are actually more often rejecting the image of God that has been owned and controlled by religious fundamentalism or spiritual tradition hijacked by self-serving agendas. That seems to be a fairly consistent perspective that I hear. The good news is that these who have rejected this God haven't yet given up on God, just a limited view of God. To those who express this reasoning for rejecting God, I say, perhaps if we set God free from the limits we place on God, we can all discover the deeper connection that already exists within each one of us, the intimate connection the psalmist experiences. If we can approach God in the cessation of our limited thinking, surrendering our projections and simply being aware of the presence of life-giving energy that animates our very existence, we will know that we are really and truly of God, for God, and expressions of God's evolving revelation. Should we need something more concrete than that, the Christian story gives us Jesus of Nazareth, a real human being manifesting the intimate relationship with God conveyed in Psalm 139. Should we want to know more about that intimacy, the way in which God manifested God's self in human form, we can discover it more by following Jesus. We can notice how Jesus returns to God that state of limitless consciousness through prayer, and then engages the world from that orientation. He doesn't act out of his own worldview, but from the vision of God's compassionate kingdom. Jesus knows the limitlessness of God's grace and trusts in it with his whole life, even unto death. He also knows that we struggle with the intimate connection that the psalm conveys So he reveals for us the spirit of God, loving, healing, generous, compassionate, and forgiving. No matter where we are on our spiritual journey, the words of the psalmist and the story of Jesus can bring us great comfort. God knows us inside and out. We are never alone. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is still with us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, revealed in Christ and ever-present in the Spirit, we give you thanks for life abundant, created in mystery and evolving in self-discovery. You unite us as brothers and sisters, a community of faithful people who long for intimate connection and meaningful purpose. We pray for your wisdom this day, to seek your will and live your vision. With humility, we surrender our limited thoughts and open our minds to all that is possible by your grace and compassion. May all who long to be known and loved feel your presence in their very breath, in the beating of their hearts, in the hope of a kinder and more compassionate world. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. 
How shall we respond to all that we have heard, all that we have experienced? We thank you on behalf of both churches for your ongoing support to our ministry and mission. We thank you for the time, for your talents, for your prayers, for all that you do that enables us to bring to life God's vision for his church. We offer all these gifts that God may use them as God would use them to reveal the presence of compassion in a world that is in need. We offer these gifts in love. Amen. God will be there. Help me notice. Help us notice together. Wherever you go and whatever you do this week, may you seek wisdom. May you remember God's presence and God's unconditional love. May you reach out to those around you and share that love as well. And as you go, in your stillness and your movement, remember that God, the creator, source of love, Jesus Christ loves incarnation and the Holy Spirit, loves power and promise, is with you, now and always. Amen. <laughs>